Hey there, Christmas is upon us and I have something that's a little bit art and a little bit craft for you today. So what are we going to be making? We are going to be making these cute little ornaments. You want to know how? Well, come on. If we haven't met, I'm Viv. This is Art with Viv and let's go to the studio. <laughs> I started by tracing out the template onto some 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper and now I'm just going to draw my designs how I want my little gingerbread house to look and add the details. Once I get that on we're just going to start painting. I'm not going to didn't want to make you watch me draw everything so um, again I will have the templates if you are a member of my Patreon you will get those if you are in the dabblers level. So look for those in Patreon to download and you can trace them. Now all I'm doing here is I took a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, and just sort of mixed it together to get sort of a medium brown. And I'm painting around everything. I'm just painting the background of the house. And I'm painting around the objects that I sketched on there where I want shadows. I'm just adding a little bit more paint to the wet paint so it'll be darker there. I'll show you that just in a second, like under the eaves of the house and around the little gingerbread man. I really wish I had made him a snowman now, but you know, the next one I will make him a snowman. So that's just how it goes. You get ideas as you go. And the more that you actually create, the more ideas you get. So. I got lots of ideas while I was doing this and I will probably make a lot more of these. These are really easy to make. You don't need a Cricut machine. I have a Cricut, but I just used my scissors with this. You don't need it. You can still do it the old fashioned way with pencil and scissors and, and a template. So now that I've got that done, I will just sort of drop in some areas that I want to be darker, to be shadowed up. I will just take a little bit. I took just a little tiny bit of burnt umber and mixed it with my raw, with my sienna mixture. And I'm just dropping it in, like I said, where I want the shadows while it's still wet. Work pretty fast while it's still wet. And that will give it some shadows. It also gives, like, if you put it around the edges, it looks like your gingerbread might have gotten a little bit brown on the edges. And for me, that is more realistic because I can burn a cookie in a minute. So that is how you don't have to do that, but I added a little bit of extra brown, the darker brown in the shadows. So once you get that done, I'm going to just speed it up here. You don't want to see this whole thing. I'm going to continue painting with those same two colors, or actually, I guess it's three because it's raw sienna, burnt sienna mixed together. And then for the shadows, it's just a little bit of burnt umber mixed into that mixture. So we are just going straight onto dry paper. I don't know if I told you that already, but the paper is dry. We are just painting the background, but we are dropping the shadows in. We are coming in with that darker brown watercolor, that burnt umber, while the lighter brown is still wet. So that's our little wet on wet technique going on there. And we're just putting that darker brown where we want shadows. So I, I sped this up pretty much. You don't need to watch I mean, you know how to paint a background. You're just painting wet onto dry. You got this. I'm, I have all confidence in you that you can do it. And remember, you can always slow the video down, stop it, pause it, come back to it, rewatch whatever you need to do. Now let that background dry thoroughly. And then we are going to start on the details. Now I got out my smaller, this little palette here of watercolors. My friend Debbie Cup gave that to me. Thank you, Debbie. Shout out to you. She gave it to me and the red in there is exquisite. I love the red. It is, uh, I think it's an Italian made watercolor and it was probably the most water expensive watercolors I've ever had I've ever been given I certainly have not bought any this expensive and you know she really surprised me and I love the the red I mean all of the colors are just scrumptious but this red there is something about it that attracts me it's so bright and clear and clean and that is what color I'm painting the door and notice I'm painting sort of around the circle I put a wreath on the door so you know 
painted inside of that wreath and around the wreath with that beautiful, beautiful, rich red. Now I'm going to my cadmium yellow. I want to do the cadmium yellow. It's a nice warm color. I want the windows to look like they're glowing with warmth from within, that the light is just so nice and warm. So I am painting in the little panes of the window. I'm avoiding the wooden part, the cross part in the middle of the window and the window frame. I'm avoiding that. And then while that cadmium yellow is still wet, I'm coming back in there with just a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm making shadows sort of in the corners where those crossbars, where the window details are, just so that you can see that there is some shadow, gives a little bit more definition and I just like it. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just adding the shadows like under the little snowfall and under the little cross that's in the center of the window and down one side. I'm not taking it all the way around. I'm not taking that shadow all the way around those little window panes because that would not be realistic. Even though, yes, this is, this is not, this is just an illustration. It's not, we're not trying to get too realistic, but you do still want it to look, you know, not crazy we don't want crazy we don't want a crazy gingerbread house with crazy windows so we are keeping it semi-realistic and then once you get all of that done you can also do the same with these curved windows at the top and then just paint all the other windows the same exact way we just painted these three there's no secret to it it's just cadmium yellow with a little bit of yellow ochre for the shadows and you're just doing those shadows like right under the snow and right around where the crossbars i don't know what those are called in the window the window frame and that middle part that holds the window panes in just putting a little bit around there and you can just kind of copy what i'm doing here now you don't have to use the colors I'm using. You don't even have to make a gingerbread house. You can make this house red. You can make this house white. You can make this house blue. I don't care, it's your house. I just decided I wanted to do a gingerbread house just to see how it would look. Now I'm taking a really pale yellow green. Um, it might be green gold with a little bit of sap green. You just pick whatever light green you have. I did the doorknob in a gold color actually it's the cadmium yellow that we used on the windows and I'm just doing some darker sap green that doesn't have the green gold mixed with it on top of that so that we have like some leaves and there's some differentiate different different I'm not even going to be able to say it but you got two different colors of green so you got some very variety that's what I'm going for variety Y'all, my tongue got wrapped around my eye teeth and I couldn't see what I was saying. So now I'm taking that red and I'm just doing some lines down the door to make it look like it's got, it's made out of wooden planks. In reality, it would be some kind of red chewing gum probably. You know how the, you make the little planks out of the chewing gum for your gingerbread houses. or I mean, some people do. Now I'm just doing the little candies. And I'm making the ones that are above the windows. They're like little M&Ms or cinnamon dots. Or not cinnamon dots. What are those things? Those little cinnamon candies. But we'll probably go with M&Ms because I'm not making all of them red. I'm just making the ones above the windows red. And then we're going to, you know, mix it up a little bit when we get to the other trim. And all I'm doing there is I'm just painting the red in a circle but I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper to shine through so that it looks like a highlight. Now we're going to do the peppermint um, the pillars I guess you want to call them. All I'm doing there is I'm using my nice beautiful red. I'm painting to the on each edge on each side and then I'm taking clean water and I'm blending it toward the center but I'm leaving the center white to look like a highlight. And that gives that candy cane pillar a little bit of a rounded look. It gives it a more of a three-dimensional look. So that's all you have to do there. You just paint 
each side of it with your full strength thread and then you just come back with your watered down brush or with a clean damp brush and blend that red toward the center leaving the very center white and we're going to do the same thing on all the candy cane pillars the same exact technique we are not switching up in the middle of the stream we're just going to keep right on going doing our thing so um and if you get a little bit too much red there toward the center, just wipe your brush off and then lift some of that red out of the center so that you'll have that light highlight there. That's all you've got to do there if you get a little too heavy. Sometimes I do, but you know, you just fix it. It's, it's, it's gingerbread house. It's going to be hanging on my tree. Nobody's going to be inspecting it. And if they are, shame on them. Shame for shame. Shame on them. I don't mean be expecting stuff in my house. It's my house. And I like it like I like it. So we got all the pillars painted in. And now I'm going back to that green gold with just a touch of sap green or just straight green gold. Up to you. It's your bushes. You, you paint them whatever color you want to. So I'm just going to paint all the bushes. And all I'm doing is just making little uh, marks that look like leaves. Like little tiny brush strokes. No big deal. And just putting it all over I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper shining through I'm going to come back with some darker green later once that dries and just go in there and add more of a another layer and some more variety I'm not even going to try to go where I was trying to go a few minutes ago we're just going to stick with variety we have a little more variety in our leaves so now I am going to paint my cute little gingerbread man who I wish was a snowman and with him I'm adding a lot more of uh, a little yellow ochre in with my raw sienna so that it's a, a brighter brown so he stands out from that darker brown and I am being careful to go around his eyes go around the designs on his arms and right at his waist I don't want to paint those in, in with brown I want those to stay white and later on, we're going to paint his bow tie and his eyes a different color and probably give him some buttons too. So just try to avoid those, the trim that you drew on there. Or if you didn't do a gingerbread man and you did a snowman, then hey, you're after my own heart. But I'm just sticking to this gingerbread man for right now. Now let all of that dry. Let it dry completely. You can use your hair dryer or heat gun or whatever to dry it if you want to speed it up. It's up to you. And then I am going to paint the trim with some M&M colors. So we're going to do red at the peaks. And then we're going to go with green. Go with green with each side. And then we're just going to go with some yellow or gold color after that. And then we're just going to alternate red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow all over the trim of the houses. It's... You know, it's little M&Ms, it's some kind of little colored candies, I don't know, but it is really pretty. Did it the same way that I did the red dots over each one of the windows. You just paint around in a circle and leave a tiny dot light white in the center to look like a highlight. And I just kept alternating the colors and it went red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, all the way across and down that trim and once we get that done we are going to jump over to the door and do the same with the door of course starting with the red at the tippity top and then alternating green yellow red green yellow all the way down the side of that door with the same technique we're just painting in uh, painting in the circle and leaving a tiny white dot of clean paper for our highlight that's it easy peasy I think some of my windows look a little crooked but I didn't use a I didn't use the ruler so that's my fault and this this little house is already starting to shape up he's really cute I'm loving him loving him he is gonna make a cute little decoration for my house now those bushes are dried so I'm going back in with a darker green it's just a sap green you can use whatever green you want 
whatever is darker in contrasts with that first green you put on there. Again, we're just making little marks to look like leaves, little brush marks, and just sort of randomly putting them all over the bushes, letting a little bit of that lighter green, a little tiny bit of white shine through to give it some variety, some dimension. Um, I put a little bit more of the darker paint toward the bottom because of course there's gonna be a shadow under the bush. The bush is shadowing the ground from the sunlight. And that's all there is to that. It's just little bushes. You could even do some Christmas lights in your bushes if you wanted to. I should have planned that ahead of time. I didn't, so I'm not gonna do that. But I could take, you know, I could take some, a Posca pen or something like that and draw some lights on there later if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that though. But that's an idea for you. So now I've got some blue. I'm going to paint in his eyes, leaving a little white highlight. I switched to a smaller brush. Well, I don't know. It's a number two brush. You can, I think I've been using it the whole time, but I felt like I switched. I think for the background, I used a bigger brush. I put a little red bow tie on him or some little blue buttons down his belly. And he's all dressed now, looking cute. Later on, you can draw in his smile. I don't know why I didn't paint it in there, but you can make his smile later on. Now I'm taking a very, very diluted ultramarine blue and I'm making shadows on all the little snowfalls, that's the little snow caps that are over each window, and on the window panes. On that woodwork of the windows, I am adding just some shadows here and there. Again, it's very watery, very watery, ultramarine blue, very pale. You could use Payne's Gray, really watery mixture of Payne's Gray if you wanted to do that. It's completely up to you. It's your you know, it's your painting. You know the drill. It's your painting. You you use the colors you want, that you enjoy, and that are unique to you. Just use this as a guide. And I'm just about finished with the windows and their shadows, and then we are going to hop over. We're going to let that dry a little bit. And once we get all of that together, we're going to start painting the little trim across the top of the house now I'm making making these just red and green I'm not I'm not doing the whole red green yellow up here this is the very top part of the house so I'm just making it these red and green also again make sure that you've given your house time to dry so you don't drag your hand through wet paint when you're painting this tippy top this top part of the house roof so the next thing we're going to do is work on the roof tiles, or it's not really tiles. The roof is green. I decided to make it green. And there is icing, you know, little icing to look like snow drifts. So we're kind of painting it in, to look a little bit like tiles, or it looks like tiles when you're painting it. I'm just using the plain sap green. I didn't do anything fancy, and I am just painting in between where the icing is the little loops of icing that are supposed to look like snow like little snow on the shingles and that's all i'm doing to the roof is i'm just painting those in being careful to go around all the little loops painting carefully inside of each and leaving the icing white the loops of icing and that's all there is to the roof i'm not doing a whole lot to that and again keep in mind you can paint your roof any color you can paint it blue or whatever that you want it's your roof I just chose green and now I'm just taking that really watery mixture of ultramarine blue and just doing shadows underneath each curve of those icing uh, ropes of icing those little snow drifts just to give it some dimension and make them stand out a little bit and again, don't be afraid to turn your paper upside down any kind of way to make it easier on you to paint. And I forgot this last little row, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in while we're here. And we have a cute little roof. 
then you just let that dry and then we're going to cut it out and I'm just using regular child scissors. That's it. Now I'm not going to make you watch me cut this whole thing out. Just remember to cut around the tabs and just cut the rest of it out. Once you have it, looks it's going to look like this. Then I'm going to score. Now I'm not cutting, I'm scoring. This is a combo machine. It cuts and scores, but I'm going to use the scoring tool just to cut, I mean, just to score where I need to fold it on the folds. Now you could uh, draw on the back where you need to score it and turn it over and have those marks visible. I'm just eyeballing it because I'm lazy <laughs> because I don't want to turn it over the, on the back and do it. So now I've scored everything that needs to be folded, all the tabs, all the sides of the house, the roof, and that little bottom part. And then I'm just going to fold them in just a little bit, get them going, get them started because then I want to take some tape and I use double stick tape, but I think probably a glue gun would be better. You'll see how I have to wrestle with this thing. I feel like I'm wrestling a wildcat on it. But um, I did use double sided tape. You can use double sided tape. I just think that I, next time I'm going to use probably a glue gun. Now I've got everything kind of folded so that it'll be easy. When I start taping it, it'll already have sort of the bend. You could also use a bone folder to make those creases a lot faster. Um, I didn't want to go hunt mine down. Again, laziness prevailed. So now I am just going to start putting these tabs together. Sorry that I kept forgetting where my camera was, but I'm just going to put that down, put that in, tape that together. Now it's going to come apart as I'm putting the rest of it together it's okay don't let it stress you out if you're using double-sided tape like I am and it gets all cattywonka in the end you'll be able to put it all together once you get all the tape on these little tabs and I'm just I'm gonna walk you through it here so now I'm just doing the roof to the one side of the house again I keep forgetting that my camera is way up there I'm sorry about that I apologize and I'm just sort of sticking those together, smashing, mashing, pressing, whatever you want to call it. In the South, we mash things, but I think somewhere in other parts of the country, they might press it. But you do whatever you do in your, in your part of the country, and um, it'll work out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine if you mash it or you press it. So now I am going to go ahead and mash these two down once I get them good and taped up. I know I keep getting tape on my table and it's bothering me. It's bothering me, people. Now we're just going to keep kind of smashing it together, mashing it. And like I told you, it was going to come apart as you're manipulating each side, but it's all right because once you kind of get it going, it go, it'll go right back into place even if it pops out from the tape. I'm also going inside with my fingers and pressing those together. And I'm going to do this little part on the top of the roof. And it just bends over and kind of holds the roof together. There. See, I told you, it, it will hold together. It pops apart as you're manipulating it. Um, unless you use hot glue. So that's why I say use hot glue. It'll stay together easier. And now I am just getting these all folded in. You could put a tea light in here, one of those electric tea lights, battery operated, and let it have light if you cut the windows out of it. There's all kinds of things. You can put chocolate candy in here and give it as a gift. And then you just close that up. Now I didn't show this part, but I just used a hole puncher, made a hole puncher in the top and put some ribbon in and just did a nice little ribbon through the top. You'll see that in at the end in the picture. So I hope you have enjoyed this Art Meets Craft and these cute little boxes. I hope you give this a go. You can put candy in them. It has off these. They have the bottom. Hang them on your tree. Cut the windows out. Put a battery operated tea light in there and have a lighted um, little box little house. It's up to you. Now this one was cold pressed watercolor again with watercolor cold pressed watercolor paper and a little bow. That's it. It is the cutest little thing ever and you can design it any way you want. I also did this one on hot pressed paper with watercolor marker. So those are our art meets craft 
crafts ornaments whatever you want to call them but i hope that you like them if you want to get the template then consider joining my patreon i'll put the link below and i'll give you the template to these little little putts houses i think that's what they're called these little house ornaments all right you have a great christmas and i will see you next time